stage is set. Tonight, the Republican candidates for the U.S. Senate meet to discuss the issues that matter to you. Abortion, gun control, the economy. Live from the News 8 studio in New Haven, News 8 presents the U.S. Senate Republican primary debate. Here are your hosts, Dennis House and Jody Latina. Good evening and welcome to the 2022 Republican primary debate for the United States Senate. News 8 is your local election headquarters. I'm Chief Political Anchor Dennis House. I'm Chief Political Correspondent Jody Latina. Dennis and I will moderate this evening's debate. These are the three qualifying candidates for the August 9th primary ballot. From left to right on your screen are Peter Lumage, Themis Claritus, and Leora Levy. Ms. Claritus, Mrs. Levy, and Mr. Lumage, thanks so much for being with us here today. And before we begin, I want to run through tonight's debate format. One candidate will be presented with a question. They will then have 60 seconds to respond. The other two candidates will then get 60 seconds to respond on their own time. In some cases, a 30-second rebuttal will be granted to a candidate. There will be no opening statements. Each candidate will have a 30-second closing statement. Now, we ask the candidates to please stay within the guidelines that a lot of time. Our timekeeper for tonight is Rich Hanley, the Associate Professor of Journalism at Quinnipiac University. And Jody will ask the first question of the evening. Jody? Based on the results of our recent News 8 The Hill Emerson College polling, the first question of the evening will go to Themis Claritas. Inflation and global demand is making the costs of goods and services more expensive here and around the world. What kind of proposal could you as a U.S. Senator promote to help Connecticut residents? Thank you, Jody, and thank you, Channel 8, for doing this. It is very clear that we are in a very bad economic situation. We have 9.1% inflation. We have borders that are a mess and fentanyl flooding our streets. And we have crime that's out of control from the defunding of the police, all given to us by Joe Biden and Dick Blumenthal and the radical left. What we need to do is make sure that we are making this country affordable for the people of Connecticut and the people of this country. We need to make the tax cuts permanent. We need to lower tax rates for individuals, give them relief. We need to freeze domestic spending. To do so, we have to make sure our regulation, instead of strangulating the economy like it is now, is modern and effective, and make sure we wrap that all together in a balanced budget so we can make sure that inflation goes down and growth goes up. Mrs. Levy, you have a minute to answer this question. Our economy is in shambles. It's a result of the terrible failed policies of Joe Biden, rubber stamped by Blumenthal. There's inflation caused by the trillions of dollars of wasteful spending. There, there are the highest gas prices in 40 years. We must stop the spending. We must also reignite American energy independence to alleviate the shortage that is causing the high gas prices. We must absolutely support our businesses so that they can increase production. We must bring production back from China and other countries to alleviate the supply chain problems. For goodness sakes, parents can't even find baby formula. But it's interesting that my opponent mentioned lowering taxes when Connecticut just experienced a 23% increase in the diesel tax that she voted for when she was in office. It increases the price of every good and service they, they purchase. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Mr. Lamage. Um, thank you very much for having us. First, I want to thank this little uh, guy who gave me a card from John Paul II that says, uh, be not afraid, and his name is Billy. And there are two other people who are in the green room that uh, are celebrating their anniversary tonight. It's Mike Meadows and his wife, and I appreciate that they drove from uh, Sprague to come here and support us. So I appreciate their uh, uh, support. Look, to understand, um, to fix the economy, one must understand that without understanding inflation, currency depreciation, the Federal Reserve, you cannot fix the economy. What causes inflation is both monetary 
and fiscal. When Milton Friedman told us that uh, inflation is monetary, he was right at that time. But at that time, we had a closed economy, we had a, a fixed exchange rate. It was a different uh, situation. What causes inflation now is both monetary and fiscal. Monetary is the Federal Reserve that should be brought in within the confines of its original intent. And then fiscal is uh, the scope and reach of government and spending. Inflation is by design by the government to prevent you and I from creating wealth and equity, which is a God-given right. And that's where the United States Senate comes in. We shape the president's agenda by consenting and advising the president on the nominations when it comes to the Federal Reserve, uh, Supreme Court nominations, the Federal Reserve, as I said. Uh, we deal with, uh, you know, other issues such as international treaties. And this is where you need a true conservative who is not afraid to be uh, um, a conservative to fight for these principles. So understanding these issues properly would be what qualifies someone to be in the United States Senate. Thank you very much. All right, our next question, Mrs. Levy, you're going to get this one first. Connecticut ranks very low in affordability, especially for minority families. What will you specifically do to make home ownership more affordable for all residents, including people of color? You have 60 seconds. Yes. Connecticut is unaffordable for all residents of Connecticut. We are one of the only states, in fact, I think we're the only state that hasn't recovered the jobs lost in the 2008 recession. In order to make homes more affordable, we need to make Connecticut more affordable. And, and by raising the diesel tax 23% and with the, the high taxes on, on almost everything that we buy in general, that makes it very difficult for people. We need to bring jobs to Connecticut. We, we need to attract business here. Govern, Le, Governor Lamont wants to attract business here by creating a sanctuary state for abortion, which my opponent supports. Um, I say we bring business here by make, making a friendly business climate, reducing the corporate taxes, making it affordable, reduce the regulations. We are among the most regulated states in the country, Thank and you. that's what will help make life affordable here. Thank you. Mr. Lamage, you have 60 seconds. Um, first, we have to understand the root of the problem. What causes the problem in our state is the failed liberal policies implemented in Hartford and Washington. So those policies must be dismantled. Uh, when it comes to uh, making it uh, affordable for um, the residents to live in our state, let's uh, deal with the taxes for the regulations, job creation. People should be able to get a job. You go into the cities, you drive from Fairfield to Bridgeport and you see the disaster that they created in these cities. You go to Hartford. Eight years ago, Hartford was one of the richest cities in the United States. States. Yet, in eight years, the Democrats have turned that into the poorest city, one of the poorest cities in the United States. So we're going to have to uproot the problem first and understand that the failed liberal policies are causing these failures. So therefore, as Republicans, we should be able to identify those policies and make sure that we defeat them once and for all so that anyone and everyone can afford to live in our state. Thank you, Ms. Claritas. You have 60 seconds. Thank you. I know firsthand what the liberal Democrat policies in Connecticut have done. I have served 22 years in the state legislature. I'm the only candidate here that has ever been elected to office. I fought in the trenches for the people of Connecticut. Um, and when we talk about the diesel tax that my opponent mentioned, she's referring to 2007 when the minority party in Connecticut, the Republicans, with me as deputy leader, wrote our own budget to make sure we didn't have tax increases in Connecticut. And that diesel tax changed the formula that lowered the diesel tax for many years until now when Governor Lamont increased the diesel tax. But I will tell you this, make housing more affordable, make food more affordable, make gas more affordable. The way you do that is by having a more affordable state. And I was proud in 2017 to pass the first minority party budget in the United States of America with me as leader for the House and Senate Republicans that gave us a bonding cap, a spending cap, and a volatility cap. So when you hear the Democrats talk about how flush our rainy day fun is, you can thank a Republican every time you hear that. Mrs. Levy, I know you laughed during that answer. Do you have a rebuttal to that? Oh, I wasn't laughing. Oh, you, you were smiling, so I thought uh, you might want to comment on that, on what she had to say. No? All right. I'm okay. smiling. All right. Jody? Okay, we're going to move on to education. This question goes to Mr. Lumage. Student loan debt may be as high as $1.7 trillion with the average balance about 40000 with as many as half a million borrowers right here in Connecticut. Do you support for giving student loan debt? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, the reason why I wouldn't support that, if I were to, uh, to, be, to become a United States Senator, one of the first agencies, federal agencies, that should be dismantled is the Department of Education. Now, the way it works is that 
if you go to a bank and you want to qualify your teenage son or daughter to get a loan to invest somewhere, the bank will turn them down. Yet they are willing to give our kids hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to college and choose a major that does not employ them after, after they graduate. So we have to understand one thing that we don't need everyone, including my own kids, to go to college. We can provide other forms of education for them that are uh, the, the job uh, demand is there for them. So if we're willing to give these kids at the age of 18 and 19 the credit cards and the loans and all these things and then all of a sudden they sign a contract and the parents are involved in this, we should understand that that's an obligation that shouldn't be breached because I paid for my education. I paid for my kids' education. If we if we give those loans now, would I get reimbursed for the money that I paid already for myself and my kids? Ms. Claritas. I don't support uh, I don't support that proposal and it is because there was an agreement and there was a contract signed but the real problem here is the cost of education and the fact that there is so much debt and the other issue is uh, as my colleague mentioned everybody does not have to go to college I was a huge supporter and f and supported funding and did fund in our budgets that we wrote in the legislature of funding Votech schools our Votech schools in Connecticut are second to none. There are waiting lists in many of them. Every child does not have to go to college. In fact, we, I proposed when I was in the legislature a bill that had children before they got to seventh or eighth grade, when it, maybe it was too late, to give them the options of saying, you could learn a skill. You can get a job when you get out. You wouldn't have any student debt. You would have insurance. You would have benefits. And you would have self-worth because you would be able to work for yourself and understand that there are options in this country and we need to make sure kids and parents know all the options before they take one road or the other thank you for that miss levy yes would you mind repeating the question sure thank you student loan debt may be as high as 1.7 trillion dollars we have half a million students in our state alone with about a balance of forty thousand dollars in debt do you support forgiving student loan debt uh, I do not support forgiving student loan debt. That is debt that is held by the taxpayers of the United States. And that is, when you, when you take on a debt, it is a responsibility. But the students today must think about what they're going to major in and whether college is the best choice. Vocational schools, technical schools, those are great options. And they should be encouraged rather than than some colleges with majors that really won't allow them to get a job when they graduate. Um, what I'm concerned about in our education system is, is the teaching of critical race theory and the fact that Connecticut has spent $1.1 trillion, no, billion dollars, excuse me, billion dollars of COVID relief funds for mitigating COVID in the schools. Instead, it's been spent on teaching critical race theory and training teachers in systemic racism, which my opponent actually uh, tweeted that this country is systemically racist. I grew up in the Jim Crow South and went to school at that time, and I can tell you there's a big change in this country. We are not systemically racist today. Ms. Claritas, would you like to have 30 seconds to rebut that? Yes, thank you. Um, Ms. Levy is talking about, after the George Floyd tragedy, how I talked about that there is racism in this country, and I believe there is racism in this country. But the reality is facing the facts and then finding a solution. What came from that was the police accountability bill in the Connecticut legislature that, I, legislature that I as leader negotiated and we found good solutions to making policing safer and making police safer but what the Democrats and the governor did as they always do is run out and pound their chest and do something that they thought would get them some headlines and the result was making Connecticut less safe that's why I was proud to be endorsed by the Connecticut State Police and the Fraternal Order of Police as the only law and order candidate in this race thank you thank you Ms. Clardis and the next question goes to you for this round would you have voted in favor of the recent gun control bill passed in Congress and what will you specifically do to reach across the aisle to address gun violence you have 60 seconds thank you yes I would have voted for for that bill and the best part of the bill was the money that was going to mental health and school security. When we had a tragedy in Connecticut after, Sandy Hook, after the Sandy Hook shooting, there was a bill in the Connecticut legislature, uh, and I was there at that time. And I know that there are people that agree with it and disagree with it, but I supported it because I believe in common sense gun control. But I will say this, one of the biggest things we can do 
for gun violence in this country is put money into mental health and school security, making sure our schools are secure and properly locked down. My brother-in-law was a school resource officer himself in a school for four years, and he was actually part of stopping a human trafficking ring because one of the students came to him. Those are things we need to do. We need to make sure schools are locked, the doors are closed, very common sense things, but we have school security officers in there, and they make sure we're dealing with children and adults' mental health issues. Thank you for your answer. Mr. Lamont, would you have voted for that gun control? Um, look, um, there's a problem with gun, gun violence in our, uh, in our nation, and 99.9% uh, .9 of the people who legally own a weapon are not committing crimes in the United States. Uh, personally, I'm a Second Amendment guy. Uh, I do have a uh, concealed carry permit, and in order for me to uh, obtain a weapon, I had to take a course. I was trained properly. Then I had to go to local police. I was fingerprinted. They did a background investigation on me. Then I went to the state police. Now, as far as the mental uh, health problem that we have in this country, I think that enforcing the law properly against illegal guns in this country, law and order is extremely important, and I would support that. Mental health, sure, I would support that. Now, when it comes to curtailing Second Amendment rights, uh, Tham has voted against, uh, I mean, supported curtailing the Second Amendment rights when we had the tragedy in our state, and we have to be very careful because Second Amendment is a uh, uh, um, it's there to make sure that ordinary citizens like you and I are able to uh, exercise uh, protecting our families and our uh, ourselves. But yes or no, would you have voted for the gun control bill? Not the entire bill, because it's a bill that has over 2,000 pages in it. I don't think any one of the senators actually read the bill. And I asked this question to one of our journalists who asked me a question regarding this before, and I said, did you read it? None of them read it. They didn't know the details. Mrs. Levy, you have 60 seconds to answer that question. Yes, well, my heart is always with the victims and the families of who, who have um, been affected by those horrible massacres perpetrated by evil monsters. But the answer is not in penalizing law-abiding citizens by removing their Second Amendment rights. The answer is in securing our schools, increasing the funding for mental health, training our local police. There was great human error and human failure in Uvalde, but in Indiana, at the shopping center, it was a, a legal gun owner who stopped an even worse massacre. The problem is not legal uh, law-abiding citizens. The problem is criminals. And it, we must enforce the laws. We must end the revolving door justice. I am the law and order ca candidate. I would not have defunded the police. I would not have removed their qualified immunity and caused a shortage of qualified cops throughout the country, but including in Connecticut. That is the problem, not the law-abiding gun owners. I will always carry on and support their Second Amendment rights. Would you have voted for that bill? No, I would not in this form, because it did not provide due process for removing a law-abiding citizen's gun based on rumor and innuendo. At this point in the debate, we're going to take a two-minute break, give the candidates a break. Our we're going to follow more up with another one more question. With All another right. another question. Oh, sorry, I thought you said we're taking a right. break. That's okay. That pertains to guns. It's live television. No worries. It's a Cuban American in me, like Marco Rubio. <laughs> <laughs> well, this question is going to go to Miss Levy. What do you think needs to be done to protect schools in our state? Would you arm teachers? I would train teachers if if they chose to be trained, and I would have somebody in the school who is trained and able to carry. Absolutely. These evil monsters attack places where they know nobody will be able to, to fire back. And as, you, as I said, in Indiana, it was an armed citizen who stopped that shooter. Again, my opponent voted for the very restrictive gun legislation that, that really takes away the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens. It's the law-abiding citizens who are the ones that are paying the price for that with the increasing crime, revolving door justice system, and the shortage of cops. 
We're going to let you answer and rebut, but first we're going to go to Mr. Lumage to answer that question. Would you arm teachers? Uh, look, uh, 2018, I was here doing an interview with uh, Mr. House, and uh, when I brought it up that we had uh, we have uh, school resource officers who would be able to protect our children, uh, at that time nobody embraced that. And right now we have school districts, actually, in our state that are embracing the theory that I brought up in 2018, and I would support that. We have retired police officers who serve the community who would be willing to protect our children, we have uh, military personnel who retired who would be willing to do that and do an excellent, outstanding job. So I would support doing that. Instead of sending $40 billion to Ukraine, I think we should stand, spend a couple of billion dollars to protect our children. We protect the president with guns, the vice president with guns. We protect the governor, even the banks and, you know, some grocery stores have security guards, armed security guards. Yet. Our children, the most precious comedy that we can have, it has a piece of paper that says gun-free zone. They deserve better than that. So I would support arming, uh, having uh, school resource officers who would protect our children. Ms. Claritis, would you like to answer the question, would you arm teachers? Thank you. Yes, as I mentioned before, I am a big supporter of school resource officers. I've been involved with the police in my district and in this state for over 22 years. That's why I have been endorsed by the Connecticut State Police, and I have been endorsed by the Fraternal Order of Police, um, as opposed to my opponent who tried to get the endorsement, um, but I got it. That's why I am the law and order candidate. But I will say this. It's important to understand that it's easy to say what you will do, but I can show you what I have done, and I understand that these are difficult issues, and we don't all agree on all of them. I support the Second Amendment, as I do all the amendments in the Constitution. I am a almost 30-year uh, pistol permit holder. I, I believe in people's rights, but I also believe in reasonable laws, too. And when we see tragedies occur, I understand we cannot pinpoint every time a tragedy occurs exactly what would have stopped it, but I think we can pinpoint the mental health and the school security point. So I would. Um, I have already supported for many years arming schools resource officers in those schools. We have, again, I have seen firsthand through my brother-in-law how that's worked and working with law enforcement throughout this state. And I think we have to do everything we can to protect our children and give them a safe environment to live and work in. Ms. Levy, would you like to respond? Yes, I would. Um, while my opponent does have the um, support of the organized union, I have support from the rank and file in many police departments, and I'm very proud to, to have their personal support. Uh, again, we will not solve this problem by infringing on law-abiding citizens' um, right to ar carry arms, to own guns. Uh, I am a very proud member of CCDL and the NRA, um, we shoot as a family, we, we own guns, and uh, I will always support the, law, the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens. Thank you for your answers. Now we're going to take that pause, a two-minute break, give the candidates a quick break. We'll be back in two minutes with more of the Republican U.S. Senate primary debate here on News 8 and WCTX. Welcome back to our News 8 presentation of the Republican primary debate for U.S. Senate. I'm Chief Political Correspondent Jody Latina. And I'm Chief Political Anchor Dennis House. Let's get right back into the questions. And Mr. Lumage, this next question will begin with you. And we're going to shift to the issue of abortion tonight. With the overturning of Roe v. Wade by the U.S. Supreme Court, how would you, as a U.S. Senator, vote if a federal law codifying the right to an abortion was put on the floor of the Senate for a vote? Well, first of all, Roe v. Wade, which was decided in 1973, was decided on shaky grounds, and uh, the Supreme Court got it right this time. They didn't reverse that. What they did, they exercised the Tenth Amendment, which uh, is there for a reason, because the Founding Fathers wanted us to make sure that certain decisions should be made by the states instead of the federal government. So they exercised or implemented the Tenth Amendment and reestablished uh, republicanism once again. So I'm proud of it, and I would have, I agree with the decision of the Supreme Court now. So codifying, uh, uh, I would vote against it because the federal government shouldn't have anything to do with that. And I would vote against it. Uh, let the states decide on this. If Connecticut wants to have abortion, fine. But if another state decides not to have abortion through the election process, let the voters decide this instead of the Supreme Court. So they got it right and I would, uh, I would support. I would not vote to codify it, but I support um, the reversal for Roe v. Wade. Ms. Clarinus, you have 60 seconds. Thank you. I have always supported a woman's right to choose. Uh, throughout my career, I do not believe in late-term abortions unless the life or health of the mother is at risk. I support parental consent as long as there 
is a judicial option for minors who, who are afraid to talk to their parents about their pregnancy. I understand this is a difficult issue and I understand we don't all agree on, but what I can say to you is this. I have been consistent in my tr position to give a woman the right to choose and make that be a decision between she and her doctor. And you will always get that direct uh, opinion from me. Mrs. Levy, you have 60 seconds. As a mother of three wonderful sons, I experienced a very difficult time having children. My life was at risk three times in one of my pregnancies. And thank you to God, thanks to God, I had good medical care. They were able to save me and, and eventually deliver my babies healthily. So I am pro-life. I am committed to a life beginning at conception. I recognize the exceptions of the life of the mother, rape and incest. But my opponent has helped to make Connecticut a sanctuary state for abortion. Our governor is now advertising Connecticut as a place companies should come because their employees are able to have abortions here instead of really addressing the problems of why businesses aren't coming to Connecticut. And something doesn't sit right with that appeal to me. Thank you. Mr. Lamar, this is your question. Would you like to respond? Uh, yeah, actually, I would like to respond to that. Uh, it's interesting because when it comes to famous, I respect one thing about her that she believes in certain Only principles. Thing? Many things. Uh, she believes in certain principles with which mm. I disagree. She's uh, pro-abortion, I'm pro-life. Uh, she's against the Second Amendment to a certain extent, I am pro-Second Amendment. What bothers me about Leora is this. In 2012, when she spoke at the National Republican Convention on behalf of Mitt Romney, she was pro-abortion. 2016, yeah, she wrote an article against Donald Trump. She's pro-Trump now. Then she donated to Blumenthal, now she wants to defeat Blumenthal. They, the voters for the primary, have a clear choice. Center left Thomas Claritas or a true unwavering conservative, which is Peter Lomage. I'll let you respond first, Ms. Claritas. Well, well thank you. I, I, first of all, I need to clarify the record. As, as, as I've seen oftentimes lately, um, you are not, Lior is not clear on her facts. I was not in, even in the legislature when there was a vote on making Connecticut a safe haven for uh, abortion from other states. So. I need to clarify that was this past legis legislative session and I was not in the legislature then. Mrs. Levy? Yes, I need to rebut a couple of things. Go right ahead. First of all, boy, it feels like there may be three candidates but only two campaigns. Really interesting, Peter. Uh, I am the only pro-life candidate. Everybody grows and, and learns in life and my life experience changed my heart. I am endorsed by the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America PAC. I am pro-life. Um, I never donated to Blumenthal. That is a lie. Mm, no. That is a complete lie. I mean, maybe you're talking about my husband and, oh, a quarter century ago Mrs. gave $100. But I'm looking forward to the next quarter century. Mrs. Lee, right and that of time. was my husband. Right of time. The next question is on a related topic. Jody? This goes to Ms. Claritas. In the wake of Roe, many are wondering about the precedent that it might set for future cases, including access to birth control. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas condemned Griswold versus Connecticut, which protects the right for married couples to buy and use contraceptives without government restrictions. Justice Thomas wants the High Court to review this case. Where do you stand on the issue of access to birth control? Well, as I've mentioned earlier, I believe in a woman's right to choose, and I believe in uh, people's right to access birth control. I mean, you can't say on the one hand that you don't support abortion, and then on the other hand say people should not have birth control. I mean, so what is the answer? We should just, everybody should continue to continue having babies upon babies? I mean, we have the right as adults to buy cigarettes, to buy alcohol, to buy you know, any one of a number of things. I think it would be preposterous to say you do not have the right to purchase birth control as a consenting adult. Mrs. Levy. Yes. As a woman, uh, I, uh, I am in favor of anybody who wants to use birth control to be able to buy it and to use it. That's a private 
decision. And the Dobbs case, I, I believe it was written in the case that it has nothing to do with birth control. So that really is a moot issue. But regarding my opponent who speaks at Planned Parenthood rallies supporting abortion and who has a 100% rating from NARAL, while I attend the March for Life and I have been endorsed by Susan B. Anthony, Pro-Life America PAC, there's a big difference. The voters have a, diff a choice. There is a contrast here. And I'm running in a Republican primary, not a Democrat primary. And her views on abortion are more suited to running in a Democrat party, are more like Senator Blumenthal's, who has proposed a bill that would allow abortion all the way to the day of birth than they are in a Republican primary. Thank you for your answer. We're going to give you a rebuttal. I just want Peter to answer first. Mr. Lumaj. Uh, I think that uh, Chief Justice uh, Roberts actually made it clear that uh, the reversal of Roe v. Wade is not going to uh, disturb other previous decisions rendered by the United States Supreme Court. So I firmly believe that they will follow on that. But always remember that if you go back to the 1800s, the Supreme Court reversed itself a number of times. And, and this time they got it right. But uh, I still believe that Chief Justice got it right, Roberts, when he said it's not going to disturb and all the other previous decisions regarding these matters will remain intact, and I firmly believe that. Ms. Claritis, would you like to rebut what your opponent said? She said that you speak at Planned Parenthood rallies. Again, I am pro-choice, and I support a woman's right to choose. Um, I have been public about that. Again, I have been consistent with my, with my opinion on that, as opposed to my opponent who has not been consistent on her opinion in regards to that. And I certainly, as I said, stated earlier, do not agree with abortion uh, for a full nine months. Pro um, late-term abortion, I only support the life and health of the mother at risk. But I will say this. You want to talk about Dick Blumenthal? We all agree that Dick Blumenthal needs to go. And we all also understand that I'm the best candidate to do that. I have the best chance to do that. I've won 11 elections. Uh, when my opponents have won no other elections, and I have the best record for to win Thank an you. election in Connecticut, and that's the goal here. Mrs. Levy will be the first to answer this next question. Since Connecticut is historically a blue state where the majority of voters is unaffiliated, how will you work to win the moderate vote? Why should the unaffiliated voters watching right now support you? They should support me because I am a principled, common sense, conservative Republican. I am. It, not a career politician. I am a career American. The issues that are driving this election are the economy, the invasion at the border, the rising crime, the indoctrination of our children with critical race theory, the division of our society between one race and the other. I stand for unity of, our, of the American people. I stand for common sense Republican economic policy. Before Biden was elected, we had a strong economy. Gas prices were under $3. Everybody who wanted a job had a job. Highest employment rates for blacks, women, Hispanics, youth. Those are the policies at work, and we can see what has happened under the failed policies of a Biden administration. Thank you. Mr. Lumage, you have 60 um, seconds. Look, from 2006 to present, the Republican Party has lost every statewide election. There are two reasons for that. The party always nominated their favorite. And uh, the nominees were afraid to be a Republican. So I'm not afraid to be a Republican. I'm a conservative. I'm the only one who is an unwavering conservative, never changed my positions. In 2014, I was able to get approximately 500,000 votes. I did better than Tom Foley and Heather Summers in many towns. We experimented with Waterbury. We got, I got 47.8% of the votes in Waterbury because we went to the communities. I was able to tell them, look, I started flipping burgers when I came to the United States. I didn't speak word of English. The American dream is there. I was able to go to college. I went to law school. I became an attorney. I'm living the American dream. The American dream is there, but for the government that is preventing you and I. The biggest threat to the Democrat Party is prosperity through liberty or liberty through prosperity. If people prosper, the Democrat Party becomes obsolete, and that would be my job to make them obsolete in the future. Thank you. Ms. Claritis. Uh, thank you. I 
I, again, I have won 11 elections in this state in a Democrat-leaning district, and that's important because Connecticut is a Democrat-leaning state. I have served not only those 11 terms, but I was elected the first and only woman leader of the Connecticut House Republicans. And I have crisscrossed this state more times than I can count. And I've talked to people all over this state. And I know I am a strong, common-sense Connecticut Republican. And that's how you win an election in the state. I'm a proven winner, and I have a proven, I'm a proven fighter. I have fought for lower taxes. I have fought for less spending. I have fought for the rule of law. And as I explained earlier, we passed the first minority party budget in the United States of America in 2017 that gave financially responsible and financially conservative policies to the state of Connecticut. Unfortunately, my opponent's only qualification for running is being a fundraiser for people and not only giving to Dick Blumenthal, but also to Chris Dodd. Thank you. Jody? We're going to move on to the topic of immigration. Mr. Lumage, this question goes to you. There's an uncertain... Why are you picking on me with immigration? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> There's an uncertain Excuse future me, of the deferred action for childhood. Since she, she Excuse suffered. me? Do I get a rebuttal to that? Since we can she... get back to that after you answer the question. You can use your time for that. There's an uncertain future of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, which has provided temporary legal status to thousands of immigrants brought to the United States unlawfully as children. Should DACA be made permanent? Look, DACA was an executive order. It was never passed properly by the United States uh, House and Senate. This is where the United States Senate comes in. When you shape the president's agenda, this is where we put up a good fight to defeat the militant socialist agenda that is being implemented in our country. Now, I benefited from the immigration laws of this country. I waited in refugee camp with my family for nine months to be processed to come over here. My mother waited seven years to join me. My brother waited 13 years to join me in the United States states legally. If we did it legally, why should we reward others who came to the United States illegally? That is breaking the law. We either enforce the law in every aspect of our you know, society or we don't. Immigration law is federal law and they flaunt the federal law and they shouldn't be rewarded with uh, giving them a permanent status in the United States. Thank you for that, Ms. Claritas. Well, certainly we have a concern about the people that are um, in this country through our open borders. I believe in as much legal immigration as we can have. But our open border policy has gotten us into a place where fentanyl is flooding our streets. It is the number one killer of 18 to 45 year olds in this country. The ingredients for opioids come, 90% of them come from China to Mexico and flow through the Mexican borders. If life and health of our own citizens is not an important reason to make sure we have a border policy that is secure. Again, my grandparents fled a genocide to come to this country. They came here for that American dream. They raised a family. They raised, they raised grandchildren. They started a business. That's why I'm running for the United States Senate, because I want to give this country back to the people, because I want to make sure that American dream remains. But unfortunately, our border policies right now are not working. Thank you. Ms. Levy. Well, I am an immigrant. I escaped Cuba communist Cuba with my family, we came here legally. I waited eight years to become a citizen, legally. We must enforce our laws. We cannot let people start out here having broken the law. We have a, a, an invasion at our border thanks to Biden, rubber stamped by Blumenthal, enforced by Mayorkas. This triumvirate is destroying our country with fentanyl, human and drug trafficking, and terrorists who have come across that border. 56 terrorists alone have been apprehended this year, but who knows how many got through. Over 207,000 illegals were, at, were encountered at the border. We must close the border. We must continue building the wall. We must use electronic surveillance. We must use drones and enable the border patrol to do their job. This is a public health risk, and it is a national security threat to our country. I wanted to give you the opportunity to take 30 seconds if you choose to rebut what your opponent had said to you in the previous question. That is your option. Yes, well, um, again, what my husband does is my husband's business. I don't know, you haven't been married as long as I, but after 37 years, I've had quite a few arguments, and that was one of the things about which we have argued. And um, 
Well, I'm not going to talk about, I don't blame you for the rate hikes at Eversource. What your husband does is what your husband does. Well, I think so, you should check your records a little more carefully. Well, I think you should check the records more carefully, I would frankly. check the records. We'll so let you jump in here. Anyway, um, I'm here not to litigate the past. I am here to talk about the future. Elections are about the future. And I'm here to make life better for the families of Connecticut. Thank you. Did you want to take any time to rebut? Now, I, you know, I will just say I, I, have, I am privy to the same records that Mr. Lamage has, and we've seen the same thing. I think, I think Ms. Levy needs to check her records more clearly. We've seen, um, it's she interesting that you're money. fighting to take out Dick Blumenthal, who you donated to, and I, also I never died. donated to Bill Talk Dick about Blumenthal. Being a it was my husband. All right. Ladies, we're going to move on. 25 years ago. Thank you. We're going to move on to the lightning round portion of the debate. Yes or no, quick answers here, or just a couple of words. Everyone will get to answer. We're going to go left to right. The first question goes to Mr. Lumage. President Trump, if he should run in 2024, would you support him? Look, I support yes the Trump no. policies. I voted for him <laughs> twice. I didn't change my position, never did, because I like his policies. All of us should ask one question. Which one would of the you policies vote yes would you no? choose? Which one of the policies would you choose right now? The yes Trump or no? Would you vote policies for or the current ones? Lightning round, yes or no? <laughs> Policy-wise, yes. Ms. Claritis. I would have to see who else was running on both sides. I always Please. vote for the Republican nominee. I've always supported the nominee, unlike my opponent, who did not vote for I Trump mean, yes. Yes and no. gave us Biden. Um, yeah, we'll get back. Ms. Claritis, yes or no if he's on the ballot? It would depend on who else he's running against. I always support the Republican nominee. If he is our nominee, I right. will support him. Let's move on to the next okay. question, Jody. I just need to respond Mr. to that. Lumage. No, 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 it's a, it, yeah, it's a lightning round, Jody. It's a yes or no. Mr. Lumage, recent news 8, the Hill Emerson College polling found that 6 in 10 voters support a maximum age limit for elected officials. Should there be an age limit? If so, what age? I believe in term limits. I would be the first one to introduce that bill if I were elected, term limits, because people, elected officials, are losing Thank you. contact with the voters. Just to clarify, you're asking about an age limit. Yeah, age, age limit, limits. Mr. Lumage. No. Mr. Lumage, age yes limit? Yes or no? No. Term no. limit. I believe in term limits. Term limit? No to the age limit? Term limits. I have signed the term limits pledge, and I, I pledge question. to only serve two of terms it's a one at word the most. Our Thank next you. question, the aging I-91 I-84 interchange in Hartford needs to be replaced and there are plans to do it. Do you support the current plan to bury the highway, Mrs. Levy? It's an interesting plan. I am not familiar with it and I'd have to see how much is involved, how much, you know, what it would cost and, and <coughs> what it would entail. No. Mrs. Claritas? No. Uh, look, instead of spending money yes, all no. over the world supporting other countries, we should invest in our country. I'm America first candidate. Now it's time for your for our closing statements. And uh, we've gone through this as to who will go first. And Jody, we're going to direct we're gonna this. We're going to start with Peter Lumage. Mr. Lumage gets to go first. Uh, thank you. Uh, when Reagan said that to look at the greatness of uh, United States, you should look into it through the eyes of refugees. And I happen to be a refugee from Albania. I've seen the greatness of this country. I'm living the American dream. But everything that America stands for is under attack. What we need right now to defeat Blumenthal, we need someone who has the character, the backbone, and the fortitude to be a true Republican, to be a conservative. For the past 10 years that I've been involved in politics, I never changed my position. There is a clear distinction in this ways. It is between Thames Claritas and I. I'm the conservative, she's center-left. If the voters want someone who is center-left, they should go with Thames. If they want a true conservative, unwavering conservative, they should stick with me and I hope they give me a chance on the uh, 9th of August. Mrs. Levy. Well, we have a great opportunity to win in November to defeat Dick Blumenthal, but it matters who we nominate. I'm a principled, common-sense conservative. Blumenthal is the face of Biden in Connecticut. I am running to rid Connecticut of the Blumenthal blight. It's the career politicians who have gotten us into this mess. I am an outsider, not a career politician, and I am a career American. I have lived an American dream, and that's what I want for every single American, and especially our children. Again, it matters who we nominate. And again, it seems, Peter, that maybe there are only two campaigns and three candidates, but three candidates on the stage. But to me, it seems like there are two campaigns. The I don't know when that. you're going to stop carrying the water for, for uh, the Ms. Clarity. So, 
Mrs. Clarence, your closing statement. Well, thank you to Channel 8 for doing this and the viewers for watching and my, and my, and my fellow candidates. Joe Biden and Dick Blumenthal have surrendered this country to the radical left. It's given us record inflation, it's given us open borders where fentanyl flows through our streets, and it's given us an unsafe place to live because of defunding the police. I, we need change and we need desperate change. I am a loudmouth Greek girl and I am the best candidate here to beat Dick Blumenthal and take on the fight for the radical left. I have won 11 elections. I am a proven winner. I am a proven fighter for lower taxes, for r real spending, cuts, and the rule of law. I hope I can earn your trust on August 9th and have your vote. And I ask you to please join me while we make history. Thank you. We want to thank all three candidates for joining us and remind everybody that the primary is August the 9th. We're going to take a quick time out and we will have post-debate analysis with News 8's Tom Dutchick and the Capitol Report team. For Jody Latina and all of us here at News 8, I'm Dennis House. Thanks for watching. Good evening, I'm Kepler Report host Tom Dutchick. Joining me on the post-debate power panel, former House Speaker Joe Arasimowitz, former Minority Leader John McKinney, gentlemen, three candidates vying for the chance to battle Senator Richard Blumenthal in November. Fellows, what stood out at a high level? We were all watching this backstage. At a high level, what stood out, Jenny Mack? At the high level, what stood out for me is Themis Claritis, who's had a successful career as a state representative, first woman leader of the House, embraced her role as someone who's won elections, wasn't afraid to talk about what she's done at the past, uh, and I think the other thing was Peter Lamage trying to distinguish himself from Leora Levy as the true conservative in the race. Those are the two things that stood out. Joe Sim was my Democrat on the panel. Give us uh, how this looked at your, from your side of the aisle. Well, 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 look, we heard Blumenthal a lot, right? So yeah. that was the topic of the discussion, which I thought was good. I think that's ultimately their goal. Themis John, you're absolutely on the money. She stood by her record. She has a record. She had success in a Democratic district, and that's because she really is down to earth, listens to people, and makes conscientious decisions. Mm -hmm. I thought Peter performed very well. He stuck to what he believes in and he was consistent. Leora, to me, really struggled with a lot of questions, a lot of questions she didn't even answer and she just went over to the talking points. Yeah, I think one of the interesting points is, you know, we were, we were back watching this and we were calling out the clips that we thought was interesting and we said, ooh, now that's one we got. The first one, uh, John, in the control room is a clip on abortion. Roll that one. I have always supported a woman's right to choose uh, throughout my career. I do not believe in late-term abortions unless the life or health of the mother is at risk. I support parental consent as long as there is a judicial option for minors who, who are afraid to talk to their parents about their pregnancy. I understand this is a difficult issue and I understand we don't all agree on, but what I can say to you is this. I have been consistent in my t position to give a woman the right to choose and make that be a decision between she and her doctor. And you will always get that direct uh, opinion from me. You don't win debates, you just try not to lose them. How did Themis do with these, this answer? Oh, I think she did very well with that answer. That is her record. She's been pro-choice. Full disclosure, I served with Themis. I've known her for almost 25 years. And I think what we saw in the abortion debate, though, Joe, was again, Themis has been consistently pro-choice. She supported that. She supported women's issues throughout. Peter Lamage has been consistently yeah. pro-life. And it was Peter Lamage who brought out the fact that Leora Levy has been both pro-choice and pro-life. And before so we get to Joe, let's watch that Levy clip. John, punch that in. As a mother of three wonderful sons, I experienced a very difficult time having children. My life was at risk three times in one of my pregnancies. And Thank you to God. Thanks to God, I had good medical care. They were able to save me and and eventually deliver my babies healthily. So, I am pro-life. I am committed to life beginning at conception. I Look, records have consequences. It's on the record that she had a previous position. She's changed it. I don't think she did well enough explaining it. If you were to switch such an important position to the people of the state of Connecticut, you've got to be able to articulate it a little better than, and God bless her, she did have three problem pregnancies and did it, but that doesn't explain why the switch, and that's a major issue. Yeah. Uh, guys, I think the control room is telling me we're going to do a quick commercial break, and then and we'll be right back, guys. A little more.
All right, guys, the fastest analysis on TV. A lot of notes, you guys. Look at all these notes you're taking. McKinney, give us all your high points of the stuff that we didn't get to right now. Well, high points is when uh, Themis Claire said, it's easy to say what you would do. I have a record of doing it. I've won 11 elections in a Democrat-leaning district. My opponents have won zero. I think that was her high point. Uh, for Leora Levy, nine questions asked. She attacked Themis on almost eight. That's telling us she thinks Themis is the person she needs to beat. And I think, quite frankly, the surprise tonight was Peter Lamage's performance. He did a really good job. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with the Peter Lamage thing, and Themis is amazingly consistent. The one thing on the guns that I just keep going back to, because it's an issue that's near and dear to all of us in the state of Connecticut, Themis was, yes, I would support it. The other twos were no. They hinted, they talked about mental health school security, which we handled in the bill we did. That goes right back to your point, John. Themis has yes. the record. And She's there. And they got Eversource in there, too, Johnny Mac. Well, yeah, well, there, there was a little guys, going back and that's forth. That's going to do it for us. News 8 at 9 is coming up on WCTX. More debate recap also coming up at News 8, 10 and 11. I'll be back Sunday morning. Cap Report, 1030 for Johnny Mac, Joe Simowitz. I'm Tom Dutchick. Enjoy your evening.